Many years ago, there was a guy who was a 5-star recruit, 7 foot 1 center, and was supposed to be the next great player in the NBA. But yeah, you read the title to this video correctly. Let's just say things took a different and a weirder path. And in today's video, we're going to talk about arguably the strangest basketball story of all time. So, what really happened to Zach Brown? What's good y'all, hope you're having a blessed day, just wanted to drop by and say we're on the road to 100k, we're super close, so if you're new to the channel or just not subscribed, what are you doing? Join the family, hit that subscribe button and leave a like for more. Now without further ado, let's get into this story. Before we even get into this video, I want to make this clear. When I was doing all my research, and I researched this video for two to three days because I wanted to get all my facts right, I literally, and I mean literally, couldn't believe what I was reading. So I think you guys are going to be in for a treat. And I know we say this about a lot of our stories, but this is going to be the most interesting and strangest one of all time. This story I'm about to bring to you is for sure going to be one of the most intriguing and unique stories out there. There's a lot to it, so just buckle your seatbelt up because you're going to be in for a ride. Growing up, Zach Brown was always bigger and stronger than all the other kids at his age. So from the jump, most people knew that he was going to be good at basketball, but not as good as he would eventually become. But in this story in particular, there's much more to it besides basketball. At a very young age, he was already facing more than what most people even go through in their life. Zach was actually adopted after his mother was battling issues with a ton of drugs. Even though he was adopted, it was reported that he maintained a healthy relationship with his other family. I can honestly say I couldn't imagine what he was going through and he was still so young. The situation he was in growing up, it wasn't great, but he made the best out of it. The only real positive about going through something like that at a very young age is that it matures you quicker than others. And that's exactly what happened. He grew up in Miami, Florida in a very small town that goes by the name of Overton. I don't know too much about this city, but from what I was reading, it's been said to be one of the roughest in Miami. The bottom line is, and you get the point, things were hard for him growing up. But but, like many kids out there, he could turn to one thing that helped him, and that thing was basketball. This isn't one of your scenarios where he hits a huge growth spurt out of nowhere. He was always tall, and he just continued to grow. Flash forward in time to his freshman year of high school basketball, he was already listed at 7 foot. Being 7 foot as a freshman is incredible, and he was actually the tallest freshman in the entire country for his class. So yeah, it didn't take very long at all for all the hype and attention to come roaring in. As just a freshman in 29 games played, he averaged 18.4 points per game and over 16 rebounds. I get it, he's 7 foot, but averaging 18 points and 16 rebounds is video game numbers. And if you weren't impressed by that, listen to this. He also averaged 6.9 blocks per game. Wow, that's all I know to say. What an incredible freshman season. During this freshman season too, this is when all the colleges and all the recruiting analysts started to come in. Everybody wanted to see and get a piece of this 7 foot phenom. What made his game so impressive too, especially at that time, is that he was a skilled big man. He had soft hands and quick feet. You know how normal big man and even maybe some someone you play basketball with, yeah they're tall but they're not coordinated or skilled. And I'd say roughly about 60 to 7% of big men are like that. For Brown though, he was big and he was skilled, so people started to fall in love with him. And early in 2014, he officially got his first two big D1 offers from Miami and Virginia. Even though that freshman season was really good, it was nothing compared to what was about to come. In the following year, as a sophomore for the season 2014 through 15, in 26 games played, he averaged 19.3 points per game. And once again, he put up video game numbers. He jumped his rebounds up to 17 per game. Averaging 19 points and 17 rebounds is crazy. I don't care what any of you say. And once again, if that wasn't enough for you, yes, this number is correct. He jumped his blocks per game up to 8.6. 8.6 blocks per game. The dude almost averaged a triple-double in points, rebounds, and blocks. 
I don't know if that's ever even been done at the high school level, but he got close to it. His freshman year, like I said, he was listed at 7 foot, but he was now listed at 7 foot 1 and 265 pounds. He wasn't really big, fat, whatever you want to call it, but he also wasn't skinny. He had the perfect body build. And as crazy as what I'm about to say sounds, people were already starting to talk about how good he could be at the NBA. You don't get too many 7 foot 1 big men almost averaging a triple double in high school. School. so that's why people were giving him all this attention and in that sophomore season too he also got offered by Kentucky and that is huge to me because I think that's when you can say you officially are one of the top players in the country if you get an offer from Kentucky and you're not even a junior or a senior in high school you gotta be a top alpha male and that's exactly what he was of course throughout this time too he was getting offers from almost every other school but that was one notable one that stuck out to me at this point in time in our story things Things couldn't have gotten any better for this kid. Also too at this time, he was now listed as a 5 star recruit and the number 2 prospect in the state of Florida. And for the entire country, he was the number 3 overall center prospect. And then for the overall rankings, he was ranked the 20th best overall player in the country. And listen to this fun fact that I thought was crazy. He was a 5 star recruit, right? But he was also listed higher than Trey Young. I thought that was pretty funny and ironic. Anyways, let's continue on. After his sophomore season wrapped up, he wound up taking a visit to UConn. UConn's a very prestigious college and they really wanted this guy. After his visit with UConn, he wound up committing to the program and that was a huge pickup for them. He was expected to be a quote-unquote dominating player and a game-changing player at the college level. People thought he was going to make an immediate impact, have a great season, be a one and done, and go to the NBA. After his sophomore season two, he transferred to a high school known as Putman Science Academy, which was closer to UConn, so he did that to get ready for the program. But however, this is where our story takes a downhill slope and it just continues to get worse. As quickly as he arrived at that school, he also left. He played a couple teams for PSA, which is Putman Science Academy, but he got in a fight during one of those games. It was a typical high school basketball fight. It was labeled as an altercation, but PSA has a zero tolerance for fighting. I guess you could say it was a pretty big deal because there was even a legit investigation going on. To make a long story short, the school administrators decided that he should not be allowed to return to the school. Here's what the head coach had to say to the entire school in an email. Quote unquote, good morning. Morning. I wanted to pass this along to all of you regarding Zach Brown. It's official that Zach Brown is no longer enrolled at Putman Science Academy. Unfortunately, Zach Brown had an incident and was asked to leave the school. So yeah, I mean, I think we can all agree, even though that kind of looks bad, he just got in a fight and him and that school weren't on the same page. So with that school kicking him out, basically, he only had one legit option to do, and that was to go back to his old high school. Barry, and I mean barely shortly after he got kicked out of that school, he was then arrested. He was arrested on quote unquote robbery charges in Miami, Florida. And the US Today even reported on this and said that he was being held on a $25,000 bond. To go even more into detail, it wasn't just robbery. Listen to this. He was facing charges on armed robbery, of course, five counts of credit card fraud, and multiple counts of robbery by sudden snatching. That was reported by the Metro Day Police. One semi-big thing that I almost missed out on was that he was a five-star recruit, like we said. But after he got kicked out of PSA, they dropped him to a four-star recruit and dropped him from 20 to 29. Still, being a four-star recruit and ranked as the 29th best overall player in the country, that's a big deal. So for a hometown hero to get arrested on all those charges, it was making a lot of noise around the country. Like I said, things continue to get worse and worse. Once he officially got arrested and the news got released, all the colleges and most of them pulled their offers. There was article after article after article written about this situation, and most of them said his basketball future is in jeopardy after facing these charges. That just goes to show you, it doesn't matter if you're a 5 star recruit or how good you are. If you do dumb stuff, you can mess it up in the blink of an eye. 
I really don't get it. He worked hard his entire life to throw it away just for something stupid. We'll touch on that a little later in this video. We still got a long way to go. After he got arrested and all of that somewhat blew over, like I said, most of all the colleges pulled their offers, but some held them. After getting arrested too, he now dropped from the 29th best overall player to 35. So after getting arrested, like I said, most of these schools pulled their offers and the thing with UConn, yeah, that didn't work out. Some players Places were saying he decommitted, but I think we all know that UConn just pulled the offer. He was still a good hooper, and he was still a four-star recruit, so a lot of schools were wanting to give him a second chance. And hey, we do gotta forgive, because second chances, I'm all for him, but I don't know about three or even four chances. With a ton of schools still wanting him, he decided to sign with St. John's. At this point in time in our story, things somewhat started to calm down and they were looking better for him. And he was staying out of the news, and like a wise man once told me, no news is good news. But however, with that being said, news with him in it once again surfaced. Shortly after signing with St. John's, he was accused of robbing a Walgreens. I understand and get it, he had a rough childhood growing up and he didn't have a lot of role models in his life, but come on now, there's no excuse for this. And why of all places are you robbing a Walgreens? I don't know, it is what it is, but he was arrested in Hollywood, Florida early on a Sunday morning. And according to the police, he was waiting in line, got bored, reached into the cash register, and stole money. You can't make this stuff up. We can all relate, we've all got bored waiting in line somewhere. But not once in my life have I got so bored I wanted to steal money. That just seems like a weak excuse to me. And there's even surveillance video and footage about it, but obviously I can't throw it up on the screen. Not only did he rob the store, his brother was with him. Brown's 20 year old brother at the time, known as Clayton, was also arrested. Hold on though, it gets better. They robbed the place and tried to outrace the police. The witnesses called the police and told them about the car and once the police found their car, they had to catch up to them just to pull them over. Zach Brown was already facing felony charges at the time and credit card fraud in Miami from 2016 like we already talked about. At this point in time too, it was now reported that he was playing basketball at Calusa Prep in Miami, Florida. But here's the thing, it doesn't matter where he was playing, he wasn't going to be allowed on the court because he was facing all these charges. The police said they found $135 in $5 bills in the front pocket and his brother had $30. i am not a professional robber or a robber in general, but he really is throwing his life away for $165. Come on now. There was a lot to that robbery and all the charges, but to make it short, they was charged with a misdemeanor and a first degree misdemeanor. I don't even know if this means anything because this is little compared to all the charges he was facing, but he was also given a ticket for driving with a suspended license and having an expired car tag. I know that was a lot, but I did not want to skip out on any of that information. With all that being said, here's what St. John's had to say. Quote unquote, it was a mutual decision to release Zach from his national letter of intent. We wish him the best of luck. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it was not a mutual decision and it was 100% St. John's. I don't know why they say it like that because you really don't even have to explain yourself as to why you're releasing him. I really hate to say this about this kid, but he's messed up like two to three times at this point, so there's no excuses. He's committed over seven to eight crimes and he continues to rob places. There's no having his back, he continues to mess up. I know some people are gonna be more sympathetic, but for me personally, I can't feel bad for him. We're not even talking about basketball anymore. This is real life problems. After getting arrested for the second time within a year, he was now facing court dates. So technically he's not in jail just yet. But later in that same year, he was arrested for the third time in one single year. And you wanna know why he was arrested and this is also why I don't feel bad for him? Zach Brown was arrested for the third time because he didn't show up to court. Literally, all you gotta do is show up to court and you're not gonna go to jail. But he didn't go. So as to how you can really feel bad for him, I don't know. But hold on, hold on, hold on. In this arrest and in this mugshot, it appears to seem that he has makeup on. And if some of you are curious, we're now in the year of 2017. I thought I was tripping at first and I didn't pay too much attention to it until I saw comments under the post. We're gonna get into that in just a second. 
In the year of 2017, that was roughly around the same time when he would be graduating high school. Of course, with getting arrested three times in one year, he now had no offers and no option to even go there. So, therefore, ever since 2017, nobody's heard a single thing about this dude. To say he disappeared would be an understatement. He vanished from the face of the earth. And the reason he's vanished and you haven't heard anything about him because apparently he, Zach Brown, doesn't even exist anymore. I still, even when I'm making this video, can't believe what I'm about to tell you guys. I thought it was a joke, but I did a ton of research on it and it's true. Zach Brown, the high school five-star stud and star, now is technically a transgender. And he slash she, I, I don't even know what you would call it, goes by the name of Jessica Turberry. I'm saying apparently a lot because this is according to multiple sources. I don't know if anyone cares, but people have also said his brother is trans. Jessica Turberry, who is Zach Brown, actually made a Twitter and was tweeting out, and you could tell that this was Zach Brown from years ago. The tweets since then have been deleted, but I was doing some more research and I went on Instagram and found this. So I typed in Jessica Turbay on Instagram and like I said, he has a brother and there's an Instagram account that goes by the name Turbay Twins, which would make sense because him and his brother are relatively the same age. And what do you know? It's a private account, but in the bio it says my Amy and in the profile pic it's two pics of Zach and his brother. Or technically it's Jessica and Tiffany, but you get what I'm trying to say. And let me make this clear too, I'm not trying to offend anybody. The bio says Jessica and Tiffany, which would make sense because he's Jessica Turberry. It also says transforming real, you know what, and my Amy and taller than most. That's not a coincidence, that's 100% them that adds up. My Amy, Jessica Tur, you get what I'm trying to say. I don't have to explain too much more about that. I could even go find the Twitter or the account on Twitter, but the Instagram's still there. To go even farther, I did a lot of more digging and I went on an old mixtape video from him on five years ago and four years ago, someone commented and said he's a transgender now, lol. And that was four years ago, and it's 2021, 2021 minus four is 2017. So it all adds up. This isn't somebody making a joke. This is legit. I also remembered that I had a couple friends that lived in the Miami area and I asked them to ask their friends or anyone that knew or grew up with this guy or now girl or transgender. And once again, I'm referring to him as a guy or Zach Brown because that's how we referred to him at the start of this video. I'm not trying to offend nobody. I'm not gonna post the text messages or screenshots on the screen cause I don't wanna violate their privacy. But one of my friends that got back to him said that they went to high school with him and said he was known as being quote unquote fruity. He also told me just the way he walked and his mannerisms, it was similar to a girl. When he said that, I immediately went to the film that I'm posting in these videos and yeah, he kinda does move like a girl. If you went to Zach or Jessica Turberry's high school, please let me know in the comment section if this is true. I'm not saying he's fruity in high school, that's just what my sources have told me, but it does add up. And yeah, that's the up to date on Jessica Turberry, I guess you could say now, and where he slash she's at today. What a story, man. This was the craziest and most surreal story I've ever done on this channel, and I mean that. Here's the thing. I didn't want it to be true, but with all the evidence, it is true. I really can't even believe it because we was talking about a player who was supposed to go to the NBA, and people were talking about how great he was as a freshman and sophomore in high school. He had offers from every D1 program and even got an offer from Kentucky as a 10th grader. And matter of fact he was so good that people were saying he could be a lottery pick straight out of high school after his senior season or maybe not his senior season but a year after college and then out of nowhere in the blink of an eye his life went downhill fast he got arrested three times in one year, lost all of his college offers, and now, well, nobody really knows what he's doing, but it seems like he's out of trouble, but he's living a completely different lifestyle. I don't know how he's doing mentally, but if he's out of jail and he's happy, that's all that matters. I said he once again. I'm not trying to offend anybody. That's just what I referred to as 
he slash she the entire video. I'm wishing Jessica Turberry, I guess that's what we're gonna refer to he slash she now, the best of luck and whatever he slash she chooses to do. Man, I don't even know how to end this video. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this down below. But with all that being said, that's gonna wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. If you're new to the channel, what are you doing? We're on the road to 100K. We can't get there without you. So join the family, hit that subscribe button, and leave a like for more. And as always, let's be great. I'm out, y'all. Peace.